So one uh, big subject for us in this uh, area of intelligence is not to be deceived. An animal bird that is intelligent will not be deceived. One that is not intelligent, he gets deceived. And one who is deceived, what happens? Uh, de sorrow is, is uh, destiny when anyone is deceived. <clears throat> I like that music, but... Uh, <laughs> mm. Well, you know, mm, yeah, let's see if we can use some other microphone or... This doesn't fit in that easily in the pocket. But this is an okay, that's a better. So we'll try and see the subject of uh, getting deceived and uh, and not being deceived, remaining free. <clears throat> so it's some simple uh, area for us to, you know, uh, common sense observation. If if a person is tied, tied by a rope, you know, to another pole, say, that is like a guaranteed way to reduce the quality of his life. You know, all the ideas of uh, punishment in the world, including prison, is to tie the person, to restrict his freedom. You know, freedom is the basic thing that you know, everyone is searching for. When there is freedom, then anything else is possible. You are free to be happy also. And you know, to lose freedom is the is the first sign of a you know, spiritual failure in the in that area. In, it is a failure for everyone, but spirituality just observes this. There sometimes we can be into such a bondage and not even realize that there is a bondage. <clears throat> so here, you know, in our our world, we are let us today you know in our first session try and understand this uh, subject of spirituality before even coming into spiritual intelligence. You know what what is this area and. Uh, and if for this to understand the area of bondage, that may be the first thing for us to observe. Bondage and deception. We said if someone is tied by a pole, you can see the bondage and you want to be free from them, from the knot, from the bondage, from the rope. So let us take another example. There is a cloud there. Maybe few miles away from you, you are here, there is no rope, is it possible to create a bondage with a cloud? How? Yes, if it is above you, he said, yeah, okay, it is not above, it is in that direction, you know, there is a cloud and I am here, no, not possible to create a bondage? In my mind, how? Yes. Blocking the sunlight. Blocking sunlight, yes. Any other way I can create a bondage? Yes. Yeah, very good. In different ways, if I create even a simple desire there, then it can disappoint me. You know, I create a desire, it stays in the same place, you know, and then it disappears, and then I will be uh, unhappy. Create a bondage just by my attitude. It is not just you know, I create a thought, there is a bondage, no. Sign of bondage is there will be unhappiness. That other object is having power to make me happy or unhappy. But cloud did not create a bondage, I create a bondage. 
I create a desire, then I am in the in the bondage. So the, the deeper form of desire is actually ex expectation. We take for granted. It appears to be very harmless creating expectations. So each time I create an expectation from anyone, it may be other person, maybe in another country even, I create an expectation. I create a bondage. Like the, I expect other person to call me because it is my birthday. You know, and then you know, what is my reason for expectation? He, he calls me every year. I call him for, on his birthday. <laughs> You know, in different ways, I got very clever, clever arguments. But the moment I create an expectation, I get into the bondage and I am deceived. Bondage means you are deceived. You, you have created a master. Other person or other object has become a master. Any of you got any expectations? Yeah. So when you create expectations, you are creating bondages. So now let us come to our world. And I just want to ask Sarah if we got other markers. You know. But but the green. If there is a bigger green. Can I move? <laughs> okay, I will stay like this. <laughs> I'm just wondering if that desire or expectation works both ways. Meaning, if you're trying to grasp something, it leads to a bondage. If you also believe that you're trapped and something is trying to grasp you, doesn't that also feel like a bondage? Right. If you mean someone else is creating an expectation, yeah. then it is his bondage. You know, it is possible in here in the city, there may be some people creating expectation from me, but it doesn't affect me. It is their problem. It is a bit like that. Until you take it on. Yes, until you take it on. Because of that, I create a expectation for myself. Then you are taking it on. But as long as you don't go into that area, you are free. <clears throat> I really don't. <laughs> yeah, we'll try to do it. Yeah, yeah. But if there is a stand. It appears that I am in a bondage here. So let us come to another area.
let us see our world and when representing the entire world by this image of the of the box you know so here is the world and our whole world and tell me one word that describes what is happening here in this box you know, boundaries. Hmm? boundaries yes this word you know so what is shown here is the entire physical world our country city people whatever that you can see touch is here within this we are just seeing a bigger map of the world and the entire physical world appears like this tell me one word that tells me what is happening in this limited yes still another word yes yes changing confinement you know there's some words that are relevant for us that world is the world of change change is a law everything changes you know that one moment i was sitting there now i'm standing here you know this was over there now it has come here this planet earth is moving through space do you know at what speed yeah 30 kilometers per second you know so we are zooming through space at this enormous speed so everything at macro level micro level things are changing atoms subatomic particles they're moving so change is a law nice nice to know this is the nature of this world with change comes end everything has an end nothing comes with a label it is permanent even though these are called permanent markers mm -hmm. <laughs> but nothing is permanent in this world and third label is it is unpredictable such is the nature of this world so if you are tying yourself that is already a deception but if you are tying yourself to something that is unpredictable moving jumping all over the place it is almost like being tied to a monkey then it is worse situation so here is this box any of you have created a bondage in this box yes creating expectations desires but using the label my to things here all of this ties you in this box and that is like the guaranteed reason of getting into trouble you know more the bondage is here lower the quality of our lives and as we are seeing here no one else is imposing that in you <coughs> we are creating our own bondages that is totally our choice this world outside is not in my control then what control do i have over this outer world not not a lot we might think that we have control but we don't have a control but we have full control over our inner world we, we said earlier outer success and inner success you know there is an outer world everyone is trying to have this outer success but here we are seeing the inner success and if we go into creating bondages of our own choice that is not intelligent it is like a big failure but also a sign of confusion to create bondages what happens as a result of creating a bondage if someone ties himself into this world what is the first sign of this this as we said this comes with a label 
spirit is changing, it is unpredictable. What is what will be the sign of any bondage? Unhappiness, frustration, sorrow, yes, yes, disappointments, anxiety, yes, all this. And underneath the moment you create a first bondage, the emotion that comes with it is feeling insecure. Because it is, it is going to change and it is going to end, you just feel insecure. When you are free, opposite of this, just you are free from this, there is a cloud there. Cloud is going this way, going that way, but I am not tied to that cloud. You know, it is not a problem, I have not created any expectation. I feel secure. If I was tied, then if I have some expectation, it should be here, it shouldn't go there, there is an ocean that side, then insecure feeling will come. So just freedom is enough to feel secure. These are very important emotions for us, feeling secure and insecure. No one likes to feel insecure in this world. And lots of struggles that are going on in the world is just to make themselves secure, making their family secure. In that country, this country is spending trillions just to make the country secure. How? By making more missiles, <laughs> sending missiles everywhere else. You know, but the motive is to feel secure. That is the idea behind. Agree? You know, people fight wars, they think they are, they want to feel secure. To feel secure is very important at a personal level, at a collective level, and they don't like to feel insecure. Okay, when they do feel insecure, what do they do? In the ordinarily, in your world, when they feel insecure, what is their way of dealing with it? Hmm? Fighting and let us say your friend. Are you saying yeah, your friend. What, what do they do? Because they may be a little insecure. Blame. blame other people. But even before that, all they want is more. If they have more gold, they think they will feel secure. If they have more money, they will feel secure. So they are creating more bondages in this insecure box in the name of security. This is another deception. They want to feel secure, but in the process they get trapped further in this. They want to claim more things within it. And that more they get they claim, they say, this is mine, this is gold is mine, this land is mine, uh, these people are mine, they will make me secure. Then subconsciously they feel they can lose so much more. Yeah, so their insecurity just increases as a result. So the, we continue into this journey of deception as a result. And why this all happens? Because of confusion. If you were just to see, this is an insecure box, what am I doing? Uh, what was mentioned at the beginning, better to go slowly in the right direction than fast in a wrong direction. Everyone is going very fast in this direction. They want more, 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 more. And as a result, they get trapped more in this. This reflects in the statistics that we see. Uh, one, uh, one psychology professor in Reading University and uh, his uh, book is called Britain on the Couch but he is talking about the world, all the cities in the world and what he says over the last 60 years the prosperity has increased we have got eight times more prosperity on an average, but 
at many levels things are disproportionately better life today than 80 60 years ago your grandparents did not have the travels foreign travels or the technology that we have today you know, the life is better or the prosperity is eight times more but are we eight times more happy you know statistics shows that we are four times more depressed we are 30 times you know more violent and 200 times more teenage addictions same period of time 200 times more teenage addictions there are seven times more cirrhosis of liver which means people drink more there is there are problems of all kinds in all countries all governments all political parties are promising more money we already got you know this so-called success prosperity we got technology we got science we got it all but we are having another problem at another level some medical books use our term failure of success so to have success is a big thing still people are uh, you know seeing success means more technology more you know, science more money and we got it you know already and we are having a problem at another level so it has not solved why it has not solved we are going at a fast speed maybe in a wrong direction we are not seeing the picture clearly that is all and we said at the beginning spiritual just means you are seeing the bigger map you are seeing deeper factors which are ordinarily missed so here would here, this is they are all clever people you know political world science world they are all clever people but they can't see the bigger map you know their still idea is this is progress to get trapped in this so more a person is at this end of the spiral greater will be his problems lower is the quality of life more misery regardless of the success around him so as many times you get these people i got everything lots of gold but internally i'm empty you know because this insecure feeling has just increased and so internally there is emptiness more a person is at this end of the spiral less misery but we are seeing we we have the option to be out of the spiral we don't need to be in this bondage at all we saw how we create bondages and we we have the option to be out of the bondage <clears throat> sometimes you see children children can be visiting someone's house and they catch something maybe a toy or something and then when it is time to go they cry yeah it can happen but uh, I'm sure it happens in most places <laughs> certain age children take so what happens there why they really feel great sorrow of what happens something that doesn't belong to them they they believe that it is mine and that's why there is a feeling of loss so they got deceived in claiming things that doesn't belong to them same thing happens here you know if in this world i start creating a bondage it is like getting deceived in this yeah and we'll see this in more detail one question for you is it possible for me and for us to be in this world to be in a city you know to be with people you know in the, banks you got a bank account you got it you are dealing with money food people family relations and zero bondage 
who feels it is possible to be in the city we are not talking about going to a mountain for a retreat one weekend no you know to be in the world to be in the city with people life is going on and internally zero bondage you are not in this spiral is that possible at all who feels it is impossible you raise hands <laughs> okay that's good okay who feels it is definitely possible yeah okay okay possible how give me just one word that might help me to start the process at least to work on expectations okay reduce expectations that's good yeah I don't own anything that I did. Don't confuse materiality with expectations. Right, yes. Now let us take one, one example. You are visiting a museum, let us say. And you are there for half an hour and you come out. You see many amazing things in the museum. And you come out you meet very nice people you come out you didn't create any bondage you saw things you know where you are happy to go in you're happy to come out so there was no bondage created how did you manage to be there just for half an hour but not create a bondage what helped you not to create a bondage yeah what what is it that helped you we said even hmm? it's not mine. It's not not mine. Is it? Uh, just observing. Just observing. Being present. Being, being present. Appreciating. Appreciating. And along with this, another word, guest. You are aware that you are a guest. Visitor. That's that's a nice word. And so, as a guest, you know that. That is a guaranteed exit. You are in the museum just for half an hour. You got already appointments. What you are going to do after this? That is very clear to you, and you are not creating any. Once that is clear, your exit is clear. You don't go in this direction. You are you are as if seeing a bigger map. That is all that has happened. You are seeing your journey and you are there for yeah so half an hour you were a guest and you were not creating any bondages there okay the other question i know sometimes when i'm traveling i feel like yeah but i'm wondering can you feel Right. Sure. We'll, let, we'll come to that huh? very soon. You know. The, now let us take the example of our our world here. You know, are we guests on this planet? Has anyone got plans to stay forever? Anyone making those big plans? If you are not making those plans, then it means we have a guaranteed exit. And it also means you can't hold on to a single atom of this world. This is the absolute reality. I can collect as much gold as I like, but time comes, I have an exit and I, not one atom there is really mine. I leave everything behind, this body, everything behind. There is an exit, I go. So reality is I'm a guest and this doesn't belong to me. And in a true sense, the, not one atom is mine. Being a guest, how will you excel in a, in a particular area? Uh -huh, we'll, come to, we'll come to that. But at this stage, let us first establish, am I really a guest here? Let us get this right. 
So once I know now I'm a guest here, okay, that has power. You know, it helps me to be free from bondage. That is a big, we said to create a bondage is a deception. You know, and the bondage brings all these lower feelings. If you are not in a bondage, you come in this space. When you are secure, it brings out different feelings and emotions. This is like a, you know, we all know this. Only when you are secure, there is peace. It is not possible when you feel insecure underneath to experience peace. Only when you are secure, there is happiness. We can love only when you are secure. Do you agree with this? For example, someone it makes you feel insecure. Now you will find your love becomes less in that uh, interaction. <clears throat> Someone makes you feel secure, you feel, you, you start singing song. <laughs> Why do we love children more? You know, if there was a little child, two, one year old, two year old, lots of people go there, you know, they feel, they feel, you know, loving feelings. There's some loving feelings towards cow, you know, little puppy, loving feelings but not that much towards adults. Why? Why do we love children more than adults? They are pure. There are many pure people, you know, in this world. Why I love, why should I love them more? It's just because they are pure. They don't have expectation. Yeah. Yes. Innocent. Along with that, another factor is they make you feel secure. Like an adult, they may be my friends even, but they make me feel insecure a little bit because they notice my weaknesses, that I'm eating chewing gums in the middle of some program. So they are making some judgment. <laughs> Understand? You know, they they compete with me in some level, you know, maybe the good chair here or something, you know, some jobs, they, they, you feel the ego within me is feeling a bit insecure in the presence of all these nice friends. But a child is not competing with you. Child is not noticing your weaknesses. Child is not um, making judgments. Child makes you feel very secure. <laughs> All my ego are very safe there. That's why lots of love, you know. This do dominates, this feeling of secure and insecure dominates our life subconsciously. We don't realize it, but subconsciously that is what is going on. Am I feeling safe here or not? In any place, any person, do I feel safe here or not? This is This checking is going on. We can almost say, when you are secure, it brings out the best in you. When you are insecure, it brings out the worst in you. Understand, no? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. If you can elaborate on deceptive security, for example, not my balance or I'm healthy, I don't have to worry and those things will change. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you know, something we saw a little earlier. We saw that this box comes with a label, unpredictable, you know, but we still rely upon those things for security. So that's what we saw as not very intelligent, you know, you are deceived. So here we are seeing that when there is this emotional stability within us, contentment, peace, 
lightness, happiness, love. There is this is what deep inside we are looking for. When you have that emotional stability, that helps us at another level. Then with that stability you find a better concentration. If there is a distraction, if this is not there, you are scattered, your mind is scattered, you know, when you are insecure, your mind is going all over the place. Here, you are secure and emotionally stable. You find your concentration is better. And if your concentration is better, you whatever you are doing, you will perform better. It can be driving, it can be playing, sport, anything you are doing, you will perform better. Research, when there is the emotional stability, you are more creative and you experience higher clarity. You can grasp things. With concentration and all, you can grasp things. Like even as we are talking here, someone who is very focused, he will catch something, subtle things and not get into the experience, feelings about this. So, uh, so clarity, creativity, concentration, that improves when there is emotional stability. So we human beings have a best chance of getting this. In this also comes enthusiasm. You know, when we are secure, we have more enthusiasm. Let us see this department of insecure. What happens when we create a bondage and we saw that there is some level of insecure Conscious, subconscious, insecure feeling. No one likes to feel insecure, so there is a desperation. Desperation to feel secure. And we can't avoid this. We, anyone, human being, animal, when you make them insecure, there is a desperation. How can I make myself secure? But the problem is, it is a fabricated insecurity. They bring this, you know, just like create a bondage and make themselves insecure. Artificial insecurity. And when we are at this level, desperation, and there is uncertainty. Will I get it or not? Just this much uncertainty, that is what is called stress. Stress is defined as desire uncertainty complex. When there is a desperation and I'm not getting what I want, then we call it anger. You know, it can be a little irritation, annoyance, but it is all department of anger. I don't get what I want, but I can't blame anyone. It takes the form of depression. Anger as if gets directed to myself. If I can blame someone, then it takes the form of anger. If you can't blame someone, you blame yourself. It takes the form of depression. So one nice way to come out of depression, find someone to blame. <laughs> but that is not the best option. When I lose my desire, someone else gets it, you find yourself in envy. So you will find the whole spectrum of our uh, unpleasant emotions. Their origin is here, insecurity, and we saw the insecurity started because of 
deception you got into this bondage anyone has got bondages <laughs> Uh, yes, yes. You know, uh, this, uh, these are big areas, like under stress comes fear, tension, anxiety. These are like the all in this department. You know, we saw under anger comes, you know, irritations, annoyance, revenge, road rage, air rage. <laughs> this whole department is under this anger. Under this, in you know, a different feelings of sadness and uh, frustrations mm -hmm. and uh, desire under this department. Envy, comparison, competitions, you know, the all levels, the different kinds of jealousies. But, you know, yeah, you know, and the combination of all these. So what we are really seeing here is, is how we have the option to go in that direction and get deceived in ourselves. We use uh, this uh, image of our green line, that's the dotted green line here. This line represents deception or ignorance. To come in this box is not a problem. Just like you visiting a friend, you visiting a museum, you are not committing a sin. But to cross this line means you have lost the clarity. You start creating a bondage. You start claiming things here. It is like a childish deception. You know, that is what we are questioning. Are you on this side of the line or this side of the line? <clears throat> Children can more likely, more easily cross the line, you know, in small situations. But in this larger world, we have crossed the line. And that is not intelligent, you know, and it is not in our interest to cross the line. It is like futile. They all are thinking they want to be secure. It appears to be very sensible, but they get trapped more and more in this insecure box. <clears throat> and then life becomes or any of these kind of feelings. We can find ourselves anywhere depending upon the circumstances in one situation they will find themselves angry another time they will find themselves upset depressed comparing which is they become slave to the situation yeah like guest for example here we are in this room we accept that this is one type of color here. We are quite happy the way it is arranged. We quite accept it. Guests have a very natural state of acceptance, appreciation. The, the, the mindset is different. Who enjoys in the city, your town, in the country? more local people or tourists why why tourists enjoy it more because they have not crossed the line they see themselves as guests you know whereas those who cross the line then the same world is there but they can't appreciate it because they have gone into the bondage you know and when you get into bondage other feelings come these feelings come Appreciation may still be there, but it is all mixed with uh, comparisons and other things. Mm. 
yeah 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 but let at this stage let us see this aspect you know, huh? like, like the town example that you gave even they are visiting they don't like the town but they know it's temporary yeah 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 know. yeah 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 i'm processing reflecting on what you're saying about insecure thoughts and one thing that came to my mind is that i don't want to ask you so can we create multiple insecure boxes for ourselves based on the role identity that I have had to myself to say I'm a daughter, I'm a mother, ah, I'm a wife. Yeah. We, so multiple mm. insecure boxes? Yeah, we, we don't call them boxes, but within this, many areas of bondages. Yes. We can create bondages, expectations with 10 different things. The question, you know, can we, uh, can a guest feel at home? You know, that was a question. You know, so here we are seeing when you are seeing yourself a guest, you come in these feelings. Yeah. And these feelings, you know, secure feelings, they make you feel at home. You know, why tourists enjoy more? You know, because they are feeling at home. In a, in, a, in a nice kind of way they know no no place is their home but they are at home <laughs> you know so that is that is the nice space of, of here whereas when we have crossed the line we might claim this is my home this is my home but that they are not feeling at home when we have crossed the line <laughs> because they are subconsciously you know it is insecure I think another good example of this uh, security that you feel inside versus what you seek outside is yes. when you're in a war zone. Yes. We live in a war zone. Uh, there's obviously no security from the outside, but it's very possible to feel love and secure inside because you see how fast things change and it could all end. Yes. But then there's something that's peaceful inside. Even though the whole thing is yeah. Anyone has experience of being in this situation? <laughs> so it is, yeah. If the homework is done, if we are in this space, then you are secure in um, any situation. One who is spiritually intelligent. You know, we said we are guests and we are, you know, travelers and we don't own a single atom here. One who is spiritually intelligent, he sees himself as an invisible guest, invisible traveler. Why? Why invisible? Because whatever that is visible, he knows it does can't belong to me even. And if can't, I can't own it, how can I define myself based on those things? Understand? Say, I am a guest in this place. I might be using many things here. They don't even belong to me. And it is so obvious to him. They don't belong to him. So I can't define myself based on things in this place, like car or something, you know, or house. Because I'm myself a guest. So one who is spiritually intelligent, he understands not one atom here can belong to him. He's a guest, but it is not that Prashant is a guest. Prashant is part of here. And the guest lives and he can't take one atom from here. Am I clear? That's why the invisible guest, completely free from this, he understands this world, this box that we are saying, is not our world. This is a big, big statement worth writing it down. One who is spiritually intelligent, he will say, this entire world is not our world. That includes this body also. <laughs> the whole lot. At most, Ah, let me complete, huh? let me complete. At most, 
he is a trustee let us write that word you know so he sees himself as a invisible traveler invisible traveler or invisible guest passing through this world it's amazing world but that world is not my world this is his deep in the position so many things happen there things come go he knows it is not his world he can accept the changes going on it begins it ends it may end body also dies but he knows that he never dies invisible traveler knows this that is his position so that's why his peace and love and happiness remains it is not conditional upon anything it is not dependent on anything he is not slave to anything of anything of this world we said if you are deceived you will get into that slave you are dependent you have made many things masters here he remains free in this and there, there, he, he was asking yeah. so how do you settle the physical experience for example you fall down your experience the pain yeah or continue with the war analogy uh, you got hurt and you got a pain yeah so that part of the security we are not looking into otherwise the lessons learned would be i will avoid the ditch and i'll go around the ditch rather than falling down yeah yeah so whoever you know the in either state whether here or in the other state they will of course try to avoid the ditch hmm? but if he falls in a, in the ditch one who is in this space his happiness peace doesn't change you know he knows something more you know and as a result his he the way he deals with it is a bit like of dealing with the game when you are playing a sport you fall you come out of it you you carry on with your game you know that is the spirit with which he play comes and interacts when he is in that space he falls in the ditch he might not be even injured but he will go to the psychiatrist and have a trauma and it goes on for years yes, and trauma after another trauma <laughs> you know because the mind is faulty when you're not part of the world when you're outside of the various tribes you know, in the world you know how people treat people outside the tribe there's a kind of thing of distrust you're not in us so you're the other so if you're a traveler through the world you're an invisible traveler how do you build trusting relationships with people yes and that's the first is he himself is very secure that is the first thing in this other personality that we saw you know this um, when he is insecure in this personality first thing is he is deceived that is the first thing and he is deceived because he is not intelligent he is confused and thirdly he when he is insecure he remains selfish helplessly selfish it is not possible for someone who is insecure to really be selfless such is the nature do you know anyone who has crossed a line yeah <laughs> so the moment you cross the line you find yourself in that mindset where there is first is confusion second is there is a deception and thirdly there is selfishness and then he is dealing with things he is dealing with life with this with this um, broad mindset
when he is in this space he is in clarity he is not deceived he is selfless who is more reliable in any relationship anywhere <laughs> in an authentic way he he is a healthy personality genuine and authentic so it may not be show not be having some management strategy or organizing things but he is operating from his heart and cleanliness and, and the truth always has a long term benefit yeah connection that the previous question i wonder if people will distrust you as a traveler because you feel detached that is possible you know but uh, very soon truth wins always you know they might sort of anything any different anything different they will be a little bit cautious because it's an unusual thing but in time they understand the cleanliness part of it truth always wins i was talking about earlier the psychology professor you know um, from reading one who speaks of uh, <clears throat> written on the couch and uh, one who says we have eight times more prosperity his name is Oliver James, but he backs it by the serotonin studies, study on the uh, serotonin level in our brain. You know, he calls our present generation low serotonin society. Because more we are going down the spiral, it reflects with the lower and lower serotonin in the, in the brain. And the serotonin is very much connected with our feel good factor. You know, so as we are moving up the spiral, if we manage to move up, it will reflect on our serotonin level. If anyone wants to take part in the study, we can set up a study and we can measure the serotonin level. <laughs> and you know, uh, and check again after a period of time but during this period you will have to make a regular consistent effort to get on this upward spiral anyone want to do this effort going up the spiral <laughs> yeah. yeah excellent now all that is required all that we need to do is we know the invisible traveler we know the word guest we understand the theory and it is not new these ideas are there you know many poets are telling us we are travelers we are guests so it is not new but what will be new for us if we experience being the invisible traveler even for one minute that is really new and uh, as we are saying definitely very intelligent even if we put it in practice for one minute it also means during this minute this invisible traveler understands this whole world is not my world and I, not one atom there belongs to me i don't own anyone in that world i don't own anything in this world anyone he first becomes free from this, but he finds he is immensely loving. On one hand, he becomes free. He doesn't claim this is mine, mine. But he is the one who is reliably loving. In the other mindset, he is claiming everyone, but there is no love there. <laughs> there is some kind of, a, you know, Please love me, he is singing the song, love me. <laughs> you know, that is the real song that is going on in that mind. In this mind it is different. At one minute way anyone can play with it. 
you know, and during that minute you are going up the spiral. Ordinarily, our journey is down the spiral. In spite of knowing these ideas, journey is still down the spiral. Because subconsciously we still feel, I need to claim more of this. And this is okay, this is nice, you know, for the evening. But right now I am here. This is our uh, programming, actually. Yeah. yeah. How much of the programming is because of knowledge? Right? So the thought that's going through my mind is the reason that people spiral down is because there's just more expectations, more knowledge, more I should have this, I should have that. Now I get the blood report, and I'll find that I'm deficient on vitamin. Now I'm like, okay, well, I should have this. Um, and that creates more and more expectations that leads to the spiral down. Just curious, like, is part of the how you spiral up to proactively put ignorance so that you're not more bliss? Oh, sure, sure. You know, what happens is, uh, uh, he said, if there is, we are not seeing the big map, that is what happens in the world. And these small, small things have become my world. And then if I am in some uh, culture, everyone is collecting, you know, what stones, I also will join collecting stones. Someone is having a pink hat, everybody having pink hat, I will also go to buy a pink hat. <laughs> Such is the, yes, we belong to the herd. Herd mentality is very strong in all of us. And in confusion, it is unquestioned. That is the way it is, uh, society is going everywhere. In the midst of this, just seeing the bigger map, that is intelligent. Important part of the intelligence is seeing the map. Then you know the shortcuts, you know, you don't waste time. So here you are seeing the map and it is blatant. It is not a belief anymore. You are seeing this world is, is unpredictable. It is whole thing. And to create any bondage is this, it just senselessness you know it's childish that's why that uh, ignorance and, and deception it becomes clear and then you you are not part of the herd anymore you are happy to step behind but very soon what happens is you go in this direction you you make it possible for others to go in that direction Herd is like this, if uh, say 100 sheep are going in one direction, but two sheep are running in this direction, running, they should be, <laughs> then all the others also will join, they will also run in this direction. So here, once you start this process, the big thing in this, you are doing this in an intelligent way, you are using intelligence, you are Few people need to just come to the drawing board, think what is the right direction, then you are going in that direction. And you are doing yourself a favor and the world a favor by this. You know, there is a benefit for others to come out of this downward spiral. Ordinarily, it doesn't. You know, some people can write books, they can give, you know, some president can tell this. Nothing changes because the direction pattern is very strong. But some have to run in this direction. I disagree with what you just said. Uh, I think any kind of religious movement or any kind of humanity movement that's ever started it was with good intentions of going up the spiral. Yeah. But it's always turned back down mm. because of this need in us to follow. To follow someone else's path rather than yeah. to arrive at some truth that's not it doesn't just sound nice. It's actually a felt truth knowledge inside. Yeah. So in order 
if I want to follow thinking that this is the right path and then everybody else follows me, eventually it's going to come, it's historically it's been that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is history. But now this is the right step for us today. Let us do that. And maybe we need to think in a new way. You know, what past they have done, maybe one way. Here we may have to introduce some more mechanisms to check. And we may have to create a certain gathering to support each other. We have to think in a new way. But once we know this is the right direction, let us take that direction. Question from Zoom. What's the trick to practice? Yes. Uh, uh, right now, let us create that one minute. And I just want to ask is it time for us to take a break at some point? Yeah. After this? <laughs> Am I clear? You know, so uh, in the history, things have happened like this. I agreed. But now, you know, we create history where everyone wins. Yeah, but we start, you know, uh, whatever is right, we introduce that. So let us create this one minute of practice. And during this minute, we remind that we have the spiritual sight. And with this sight, we can see the bigger map. We are reminding that we are in this room. We are here as guests. And being guests, we don't own anything here and we also know we don't lose anything we experience the lightness of a guest we experience the freedom of a guest we experience the security of a guest Just in this small place, we are guests and we already feel this lightness, we feel secure and we feel free. We remind ourselves that we are guests on this planet. The invisible traveler is a guest on this planet. And being a guest, he knows he doesn't own anything on this planet. So he doesn't lose anything. Being a guest, he knows he doesn't own anyone else. So you never lose this anyone.
being a guest he knows he can't own a single atom on this planet he has got nothing to lose ever He experiences the lightness of a guest. He experiences the freedom of a guest. He experiences the security of a guest. With this spiritual sight, we are seeing this guest in an image of a living star. As we continue on our journey, we remember the beautiful truth of this invisible traveler. Thank you. Hello and uh, welcome back. A quick revision of what we discussed so far. We saw that we are in this world, we are in this life and we have an option to lead a life either in clarity or confusion. This is a vivid choice that we are seeing. Dotted line represents this. Spiritually intelligent means you are seeing in clarity. That's all. It is not something wifi, you know, intelligence. At a practical level, in this world, am I seeing sensibly or am I in confusion? Anytime one is confused, he is a loser. There is never a benefit. You know, a carpenter who is confused, he will not succeed, he will, there will be regret. If your surgeon tells you that he's, he wants to do operation on you, you know, urgent operation, but he says he is little confused. <laughs> will you get your operation done, you know, emergency surgery? No, because he has confusion. It leads to lots of other complications and the same thing happens here you know so once you have crossed that line into confusion then there is deception there is bondage and unnecessary selfishness he is he's a being very noble you know he doesn't need anything but now he is into some kind of us manipulating selfish you know can be blatantly aggressive and can go anywhere. So we saw that life. And so on one side, the life is of clarity, freedom, selflessness, love, happiness. That's what we are seeing here. We are not emphasizing on detachment. We never use the word detach, detach. Freedom. You know, this is what life is. Other life is of bondage, you know, confusion, selfishness, and a whole range of different, you know, inauspicious feelings, emotions, sorrows. That itself is a big loss to move someone who is in this noble state to go into that state itself is a big loss. But other thing that happens in that lower state, helplessly you are trapped in a beggar mindset. Whenever you are insecure, you want, you know, want, want, and whatever they, they receive, they want more. Because that beggar mindset is, is inbuilt in that lower state. And beggar, and with that comes a victim mindset. Poor me. 
you know I'm a, I can lose so much someone can say something and I'm a loser so that is a victim victim mindset in the in this higher state never a beggar never a victim he's just a traveler he knows he has got to come out of this but never feels that there can ever be anything loss for him never a loser he is loosely associated with it he as we said he knows that is not my world you know just like if you are going to some country you know like like uh, ukraine you know that is not your world you may go there to take some photographs but that is not your world you know you may have to live any time you are, you don't have a choice and you are happy with it same here it is we might as well get that right to be behind this line means you know this is not your world that's why you are not deceived you are not creating any bondage and as a result never a victim never a beggar that itself answers you know there can be bullies and all kinds of situations going on but you are never a victim and you deal with the situation from that space whatever you know there is a in sociology and in history you know uh, the what is mentioned someone like gandhi you know refused to carry a weapon refused to keep a bodyguard refused to criticize anyone but defeated a army that had 1 million armed soldiers and how did that happen you know in a, in a bully in a, one is a bully but here 1 million armed soldiers you know when and without a single weapon so if that is possible we can deal with life you know but it doesn't mean you just accept anything but you are working from that space of clarity and uh, freedom you are far more powerful one who is confused that is not a powerful stage but you deal with it you deal with it with love but you you don't compromise we never need to cross this line that is not in anyone's interest for any reason you know like for example here you know there are some and you know, we are sitting on the chairs cushion and someone says i want this chair he is a bully you know i want this chair it may not be a problem you know i'm quite happy to give the chair to him and stand on sit on the floor is it a problem not a problem most of the time we can solve it you know because you are in clarity in that clarity love is important and you also not a victim you are not a loser by giving the chair but sometimes it may be important to to be very firm and uh, maybe to call a police you know you are able to do anything that you would like to do from this space you know if it is required but you are operating from clarity the other question that comes desires you know you know are we going to have no desires here no right now we are talking prashant is talking because there is a desire that's why i'm talking we can't be without desire but question is is the desire coming from here or is the desire coming from here that's the question you know from here also you know the the, the desires take the form of desperation that's why they lead to more bondage and some kind of a problem down the line when it is from here his starting position is is free he doesn't need anything that is the starting position and so desire takes the form of wish like you know we use the word wish wish is i wish you good luck it is a, it is a desire but there is no desperation you know i might like to give something that is also desire but it is coming from this space and uh, 
and it doesn't create a bondage. That, that, did that answer some of the comments, questions? And there's, there's something, and your question also addressed. No, no, it does help. It uh, helps. I think it, being at the upper level gets the clarity. Clarity, the, yeah. Um, and then, of course, we have been having the discussion during the break as well. Yeah. Coming from that position, I think it does um, help address things calmly rather than uh, flounder and make it. Yeah, better. yeah. Ah, he will not compromise his truth. And there is no need to compromise the truth. Stubborn on truth. <laughs> yes. So, so far we have seen the journey of the invisible traveler, you know, but he's a guest here, he's passing through, but where does he come from? What is happening? You know, let us try and understand the bigger map. What is the spiritual model? How does the spiritual model see this? invisible traveler is life since it is our it is not we are not seeing it as a nice little model but it is our journey we need to understand better spiritual model sees the whole physical world as a as a theater is this okay is it can you see so the whole physical world is a wonderful stage that is uh, like a stage drama stage it is meant to be flat not a curved stage <laughs> so if that is a stage what is this Curtains, yeah, there is a drama happening. The world a stage. Okay, there is a grand performance going on. If that is a stage and there are curtains, what is this? Players. Players. In, a, in the spiritual model. What is this? Yeah, the guest and the actor does not belong to the stage. The actor comes on the stage, is temporarily associated with a mask and a character is playing a part. The actor leaves the stage. It is, the actor never belongs to the stage. As was said, that world is not our world. So he visits and he is associated with other characters and he is associated with many props and plots. Lots of things over there. Lots of commotion going on. But he is a guest always he may be an actor he is an observer he is involved in it but not part of that world he belongs to a different world and his world is a world of silence it is opposite here in the theater there is constant chaos going on, <laughs> constant sound. That's why your mobile phone will work here. It will not work here. <laughs> because this is the world of sound, that is the world of action. So here's movement, action. This is a world of stillness. 
this world everything has a beginning end this world timeless no beginning no end and so in this model this is the home this is our world we said out in the beginning this is not our world but he can very happily say he this is my world why why he says this is my world one word reason on what what ground he says this is my world eternal eternal you know if something just disappears how i, I can't say this is mine and it is not even in my control i can't say this is mine so here things just are taken away from you to claim that is that is mine it is like a confusion but one who is intelligent he remains free from here but as we said for him the subtle ordinarily invisible that is very very obvious and vivid including himself and he knows that he is guest here but he belongs to his eternal world and being eternal that world is automatically secure nice thing that that spins off from here and worth writing down the one who is conscious <coughs> spiritually intelligent leads has to lead to being conscious one who is conscious he knows that the story cannot harm him even the slightest you are beyond harm in an absolute way many many things can happen here including death and end story comes to an end every episode comes to an end but he knows that it cannot harm you even the slightest when you have crossed the line he is forever a victim he thinks this can harm him someone's word can harm him you know he leads a life of a victim whereas one who is here he knows that no one nothing can harm him in the story a dragon can come ten dragons can come but it is fun if it is not harming you it becomes a fun agree you are quite happy to watch the film with ten dragons you agree <laughs> ten dragon and the you know and the snake or something. no problem to watch you know fire you know you know in the film of war people pay money and watch this film because you know they are not going to harm you you feel internally that state of peace love say there is a big tiger but he is behind a cage you love him you are quite happy to feed him also agree but if is if there is no cage Will you love him? No. So our man, my mindset changes. So one who is in this space, the moment he understands this cannot harm him, even the slightest, not even the minimum harm, then your personality becomes one that is noble. Personality in which there is love and happiness carefree internally you are carefree but backed by clarity we are emphasizing the first thing we are emphasizing is clarity you know we are not saying detachment is important or love is important or happiness is important first is clarity truth get to see the things clearly first anything that is confusion that will lead to other problems first come in clarity yeah yeah permanent yeah you can say it is the home yes so in this model this is the home of everyone and in other words all are same they are beyond harm 
so first thing is they are beyond harm second thing they need nothing from the story they don't need for their survival they may have wish to give something or to put that what is diff that's different they may wish to go there but they are never beggars and never victims that changes in a big way because the moment you cross the line not only there is a need there is a desperation about many things you create expectations you create demands you create <clears throat> ownership and all complications start here you need nothing from the story and story cannot harm you that's why that whole personality of uh, noble personality that becomes your experience in this personality in this personality there is zero sorrow it is not just peace love you know uh, along with everything else no in this personality there is zero drop of poison there is no reason for fear no reason for for anger there's no reason in the story going on why should he get angry every minute you are playing with this you will you will experience this it is not a long process it is from today now we said one minute you play with this you you will get glimpses of that that mind if we can call it noble mind where you are carefree and many things happen in the story in your personal life in but internally you are here deep inside and you act from that space lots of time you will find things are just okay there is no desperation about anything i might encourage you to draw a sketch like this this beautiful sketch <laughs> Or later take a photograph of this but keep it in your main room because each time you look at it that helps you to stretch the intellect you understand that? to see the bigger map that is very important for us then that is why the clarity comes in we are seeing the bigger map eternity has become very clear for you what is the purpose of the story? What's the purpose of the physical world? Yeah, what is the purpose of any stories? Entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> this is a free entertainment, so there is extra. And done in a such a grand fashion, you know, with such details, everything is paid attention to. But in this model, that is it. It is it is a story, it is extra, it is a gift for you, you know, grand gift. Your world is independent of it. Starting position is this. You know? hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's players on the stage with us that don't know about this home. Is it still their home or only people who know that it's their home? Yeah, this is the truth. You know, so it is possible uh, at a limited example, someone might forget his home, but sooner or later, you know, he will come back. He will, he will his parents will have to find him and he, Freddy comes back home at some point. <laughs> he might forget, he's so busy with the with their toys in the same thing here with us we might forget we are distracted but there is no other place we can go this is where we belong we all forget but we come back when we are in in uh, sanskrit there are two words used and they are very 
very uh, very nice smart word we need to it, it is nice to stay with those sanskrit words paras this this word is used for the intellect paras intellect and opposite of that is patthar patthar is gross intellect Patthar uh, literally means stone, Sanskrit word. In Greek, patros, in uh, Latin, petra, uh, all means stone. And patthar, it appears very similar uh, etymology. And it is gross, stone means implied gross. So if I'm using patthar intellect, I get locked into the gross level can't see anything beyond not only that in the patthar necessarily means you have crossed the line because you see that as your everything we said at the beginning this whole physical world is not our world it is like a big statement not our world patthar says this is my only world nothing else exists <laughs> So he's locked into that that state of the paras the implies refined intellect. The paras includes subtle intellect, a sense of the subtle, and it is broad intellect, can see the bigger map. Patter cannot. Patter can get caught into petty things, but make a big deal of something small. That is Patta. We have both. We have Paras, we have Patta. Just as we have different muscles, and the muscles that you use, they become stronger. Muscles that you don't use, they atrophy. So if we use Paras, then this reality, what we have spoken, that will become natural and obvious that becomes your life virus it's just like using some glasses you can see things which you had not seen before it is a bit like that then everything falls in place say if i was having some problem of the eyes and can't see the elephant can only see the tail of the elephant i change glasses i can see the whole elephant then you enjoy seeing the elephant better <laughs> Because now you can see the whole picture. It is literally like that. When we are in Patthar, we can't see the full picture. We are seeing just a little bit story and that has become our whole thing. Use Paras, you are seeing the whole elephant. You are seeing the whole picture. You are seeing the true family, true home, true self here. Until then, you can't even see yourself. So the word used is intelligence, but it appears this is like a basic, you know, at least we should be able to see ourselves. <laughs> it's not very intelligent. It is a patar is like a spiritual idiocy. You know, you are not something that is seen from that position. It is a bizarre thing. You are just ignoring everything that is important for you and caught in us. Harry Potter, day in and day out, that is spiritual idiocy. But here you are using Paras. Every minute we are using Paras, it becomes stronger and this just becomes more clear. The game is this. You know, earlier we were talking about your, you know, the question about religions. They start with the best intention. Down the line, they go down. What has happened in the world? All of the institutions. Patthar has become stronger. Aras is becoming weaker. So the prophets come with great ideas. For them, it is obvious. You know, but it goes into the hands of the those who are not Paras. 
this all over the world this is applies to all cultures you know so the whole thing get interpreted at a gross level but they cannot experience this so they will build army and fight i am right and you are wrong something like that becomes a patter based philosophy is patter based science medicine you know religions everything political i don't know politics may be paras <laughs> <laughs> you think something so i i have a um a question like let, let's say that we agree and i'm just going to use the, the matrix as another example yeah yeah of a, of a movie concept you know how do you know if the paras world is a world that's is wonderful or beautiful or if it's like matrix where you just plug in and you know have some slime juice around you like that's that's the uh, that's what was going through my mind is 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 there a framing reference for it or is that just more of a how, how to find it just take the red tablet <laughs> <laughs> yeah how to know it you know say if you start playing with this hmm? and then this is like the this becomes the experience and that is good enough you know because life goes on world goes on the options we have is either we are leading a life with this mind or this mind <clears throat> yeah you know so, uh, sometimes you know um, if someone asks say, some scientist they, they will ask you you know some questions like this and and what the nice uh, position is there is no proof that patthar is right understand that no? there is no proof that this world is the only world that exists there is no proof i cannot show the in the laboratory that the supreme home exists i cannot show any of this these are all subtle things that the uh, invisible traveler exists there is no proof in the laboratory for this and there is no proof that uh, it doesn't exist hmm? either way so you know for the scientist world they have the option either take this position or this both, both are beliefs to start with so if since both are beliefs to go in this position is not the wisest because you're just so the best thing for any any science professor is start with this since uh, and look for the evidence whether it exists or not you know look for evidence but in the meantime experience happiness bliss peace truth experience this and if in future he finds the evidence that patthar is right he can always change and get depressed <laughs> <laughs> but until then experience <laughs> the wonder of paras yes yeah, sir so if the world of the eternal where the invisible traveler comes from is so blissful why do we leave why do we come down and become travelers in this confusing world <laughs> yeah yeah why why continually come down and travel and go back and yes why yes. do we do it yeah 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 it, it is not that just that world is uh, blissful that is the nature of the of the travelers in that this world is just eternal world that is all but the nature of the invisible travelers is of bliss and is of peace and whether they are here or here their nature remains one of joy love that that same nature as long as they don't cross the line you know as was mentioned before to come in this world is not a sin but to cross the line then it is a sin you know then you are 
coming into confusion. So why do we come here? And that is a question. We said we are invisible travelers. We are also invisible actors. We are acting in this drama. We are also invisible players. We are here to play. You know, it is invisible. This whole thing is a gift. Physical world is a gift. Players, you know, they need a pitch. They need a place to play. But they also need a home. You know, so in, in football, you, you go there to play for one hour. But you have a, need a home. Say the best player, you tell him, I'm going to give you a very good home. But no play. Then that is not a perfect life for him. He wants a home, but then he also needs the play field. Same here. You are players. You got a grand place to play here, but you also need a home. Just that this is a real home. Eternally, you got a safe place here. This is the home of everyone and secure home. And you come here. Yeah. It is just like football player. He goes place. He doesn't think that he has to claim the ball. You know that then it becomes a war. If someone was to say this is my ball, no one else can touch this. <laughs> then it becomes a war. As long as he goes place, you know the ball comes. You pass the ball. You enjoy the game. When we are about the line, then we enjoyed the game when we cross the line we change it into a war isn't there something wrong with the game that most of us for most of our life spend our, our time below the line uh -huh. uh, in this model it, it says that there was a time where we were above the line you know, it may, at present, we, we have been below the line for so long, it appears to be normal. And we project that on, on the others in, in the past. We have forgotten that there was a time when we, we were noble on earth. You know, it has become prehistory. But in this model, that is you know, definitely the case, but at present we have the option to come about the line and be in this world uh, whilst being about the line. And then, as was said, it is now the time for us in the reverse journey to win back the play. Everyone has crossed the line, so how to come about the line? Let me draw that line here. So taking the player analogy, um, if, if they don't cross the line, how will they give their 150 percent and win the game without the drive to win? How will they um, will that force them to cross the line? Yeah, sure. You know, we said when we are in this space, this is about the line. Hmm? When you are in that space, there is enthusiasm, there is uh, happiness. There's a love, but also clarity. You come out with new ideas. All these are very powerful motivating factors. You know, if you get new idea, you know, it is not that I need some, I need to sell that idea and get some. He is not interested in collecting more gold, but idea is happy to bring this idea to the world. You know, and uh, he loves, love is a very powerful motivation. It is not just love the few people, he loves everyone and uh, he is happy to do something useful. These are the motivation motivators. When we cross the line, our main motivator is insecurity. Poor me, you know, that kind of a victim. And he wants to build a castle to protect himself. That is his motivation. Sometimes anger can be the motivation for some or envy becomes motivation 
someone has got a bigger you know hat and i also need to get a pink hat <laughs> this kind of thing these are the motivators and, um, what's wrong with these motivators you know someone someone might say but still there is progress you know as i envy but everyone ends up you know um, coming higher what's wrong someone might ask you this you know what will you say there's always a chance to lose it chance to lose it no peace no peace yeah and another factor is you know it is like one is flogging the horse and other is horses playing there is a difference you know when you flog the horse you know sooner or later horse horse will collapse you know when horse is enjoying then you you also enjoy that is there is a difference in other you are operating from that happiness and uh, enthusiasm that is the motivator but another factor if you live with sword you will die with sword if you live with greed you know if you live with anger you die with anger you will literally see this happening you know like uh, in the 1980s after mrs thatcher and reagan they would, the the policies that came up they are motivate people with greed it works you know you give them more you know incentive greed it works you know and they all work hard and there is progress and what is happening now in many countries greed of the bankers is is blocking the governments you know the whole system can collapse because of the greed of the few people the greed has become bigger and bigger and there is no end to it they can become billionaires and more billions and they want more and they don't care if the country collapses I agree those who are from the finance background you can see this you know so you you live by sword you will die by sword if you live by greed you will die by greed if the seed is wrong the fruit will be wrong we have the option to go come to a seed that is healthy the best seed you know and then its fruit will be healthy question from zoom does the soul get discharged or like as if the power in the soul is less is that the question you know uh, at, when the soul is free the soul is fully powerful just everyone is powerful just he needs to be free someone who is very strong but if he's tied he has less power if he's tied by four ropes he has even less power same here also so here if the invisible traveler if he remains free he will discover his power and everyone is very powerful and that power expresses by these feelings more he gets trapped he loses these super sensuous feelings you know more he is trapped in this web <clears throat> you like to hear a story and then we'll create some time for practice in this story one man comes running to the top of the mountain in uh, what, uh, front uh, which place hmm? Fremont. <laughs> and on the top of the mountain there were there, there, there was a monk sitting there 
He goes to the monk and says, Stone, stone, where is the stone? So that monk is a bit surprised by this, what is going on here. And this man says, I had a dream at night. In my dream, I saw God. God asked me, go to monk. <laughs> you will see a monk there and this monk will give you a stone and that stone will make you rich forever so he says i left straight away so as i'm told in the dream i came here and you are here you know there is a monk so where is that stone so the monk says now i know what you're talking about there is a stone under that tree that is for you. It will make you rich. So he goes to that tree and there is a big stone. And this stone is a diamond, not an ordinary stone. He says, I always knew God loves me. You know, so he takes this stone, puts in his bag, goes home as quickly as possible. He comes again after one week to the monk. Why? Another stone? Hmm? I'm not happy. Not happy, yes. He comes again, he says, possibly I'm the richest man in the town, but I didn't sleep whole week. I'm worried about this stone in my house. I don't know what to do with this. I, I don't want to leave the house because there is a diamond. I don't want anyone to visit my house because they might see this diamond. So he says, I'm in big trouble. And he asks the monk, what wealth have you got that allowed you to give away that diamond? I want that wealth. What, what is that wealth he has got? Contentment. You can say the ultimate currency we are looking for is this. Agree? Everyone is looking for, you know, even if someone wants gold, why he wants gold? You know, he wants more, more gold. He can't even eat that gold, but he wants it. Why? He thinks that with that gold he can buy happiness or with that gold he can buy security or he can buy love. He thinks that way. So he is looking for something else, different currency. But in his confusion he thinks he has to do it through gold. One who is intelligent, he, he has a way of coming to this first. Nothing wrong with gold but he knows to come to this highest currency first. He got his fullness and clarity and peace and happiness unconditional upon this box. And then he's quite happy to come here and play the game ever. You know, but he is not coming here as a beggar he is not coming here as a victim. He comes here as a noble, noble player. At present, we also know once you cross the line, idea of wealth changes. You know, so that wealth, the idea of wealth, the I, line is a line of ignorance, a line of deception. So once you cross the line, your idea of wealth is based upon the kind of ignorance you have. After the First World War, a cigarette was the currency in some countries. Understand that no? because the, you can't buy anything with the other money. So cigarette was the currency. 
but different different areas depending upon the ignorance for one ignorance some painting and something that becomes the wealth another kind of ignorance and some metal becomes wealth stone becomes wealth but in clarity that is not wealth anymore your whole definition of wealth changes something that is temporary here and something that is from the story that is not wealth and it doesn't even belong to anyone that is not his idea of wealth his whole understanding of wealth is different quite happy to use this for the theater just like here we have kept this it is nice decoration <laughs> You know, so we may keep a diamond here, in a big diamond as a decoration. But no diamond, there is a stone, stone is also nice. And no stone is also nice. It is not wealth. But for drama, some scene, you need some things. Like, you know, you need some kind of paintings to create a certain atmosphere. One scene. Another scene, you need different kind of uh, arrangement. But not wealth. If those paintings are not there, that's not the end of the world. That is the attitude of one who is in this space. This whole thing is extra for him. Everything is extra. Like for us, this is extra. It is there, not there. It is in the same way for him. Everything here is extra. When it is extra, it becomes like a gift. Like say here, I need one marker, you know, blue. If there are two markers, it's a gift. It is extra. You know, it, it is not a problem. You know, so also here for him, this whole thing is a whole thing, a gift. Every moment appears like a gift. Excellent. You want to add anything? Say anything? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a bookstore that has uh, some uh, drawings or pictures. You might explain going beyond the line. Uh huh. Nice. Let us create some opportunity for practice and I will sit and take this. it. <laughs> Our whole practice becomes very, very easy the moment we use Paras. It is almost like using the right spectacles. And with these glasses, we are able to see the whole physical world as a story. Seeing in a completely new way. So everything that happened since morning was a story, a performance. And what happened in the past, a story. 
and when we see anything as a story there is nothing to complain about and there is nothing to worry about and nothing to be obsessed about the all things expansion of the story story has got so many details they are all have the place and there is no feeling of criticism or or complaint on his paras he can step beyond the story story is not the only world and beyond the story is silence beyond the story is reality there is no noise of the story here we see this world in an image of a sky This world is timeless. Timeless, changeless, endless. All that we have done is use the use the right intellect as simple as that and we are seeing the same world from a completely different angle we are now seeing the real world and in this real world is the true family this is the world of immortality everyone is immortal this environment paras environment that helps the soul, helps the true self to become conscious. He sees himself as a living star that appears normal for him. To be like a star is normal for the one who is conscious. To be immortal is normal.
to belong to that eternal sky is normal. To be completely independent from the story world appears natural. Not to need anything from anywhere appears natural and obvious. Invisible traveler understands his beautiful truth. On one side is his home and his true family. On the other side he sees the great story. Big epic. Epic performance. This is the gift. As he continues on his journey, he remains aware of the immensely beautiful truth. Thank you.